to go through some housekeeping if I may. Um, <coughs> mobile phones, you can ask me to make sure that they're all switched down, switched off, or vibrate over if it suits you. Um, microphones, um, we obviously have them. <laughs> they are working, but they are a little on the temperamental side. Um, so if you could bear with us, um, there is um, an option being looked at by the city region in Wild Authorities to try to do something different with microphones, but if you can bear with us during that period of time, I'd be very grateful. And they work best if they're quite close to you, um, but not quite close to each other. <laughs> so um, that's the top tip of the day. Um, fire safety announcements. There will be a fire alarm. It will be a test, and that will take place at 11 o'clock today. So it's probably better if you just let it do what it needs to do and try not to sleep over it. Um, if there is a fire, there is an assembly point outside the Liverpool Museum, so it's so believe it's going to be a test. And then filming and photography, um, we welcome uh, filming and photography, and obviously events of the public are in fact filming today, so just to be aware that that's happening. Um, if anybody need an induction, if you need any assistance with that, please let our colleagues know in democratic services. Okay, if we can move to the formal agenda. <coughs> colleagues um, just move business straight on to item number two which is apologies for absence are they any apologies for absence yes sure about apologies from councillor jimmy jackson and councillor tom hans thank you charles are they any other apologies
see updates from National Mayor and City of Rado. So an overview, an overview of the National Mayor's activities is attached to the map. Chairman, yeah. before, before you move on, Chairman, I did ask a question regarding the quarters or the quarter of these meetings. I noticed I did ask for uh, an overview of other city regions because the quorum is exceptionally high in this case. I did ask it to be referred to government to find out why this quorum is set so high. Yeah. Uh, and if you notice, you know, West Midlands, they've had the number about one that the high, higher than us. So, has there been any inquiries to government or any answer from government on that? Chairman. Um, representations have been made to government through a recent consultation exercise um, about scrutiny generally and the city region submitted a response which outlines concerns it has about scrutiny quorum level. Um, that response can be circulated um, by the Democratic Services Club if that assists. But yes, those points have been made. We're not alone in this scenario of quorum, so this document conveys to you. So that's okay. Uh, the only reason I was asking was because it, it, it does look rather onerous uh, on us, and now I'm seeing West Midlands, uh, they're worse than us, because you know, it, it might appear to the general public that represent, you know, representatives of the people aren't uh, taking the responsibility uh, with due diligence. You know, but if this is repeated throughout the country, uh, somebody needs to uh, take some action because there are lots of us who attend as, are as disappointed, no doubt, as others. Thank you, Councillor Mabashi. Uh, I think there is an issue and something that the combined uh, authority had tackled the last Open and Scrutiny Committee meeting, so I welcome those comments on the arm of it. So, can we just move on to the agenda item number five, please? The uh, recent activities of the Metro Mayor are attached to page 11 of the agenda, and can I invite Metro Mayor Steve Goddard? Thanks, Chair. First of all, congratulations on your appointment, and it's great uh, to see so many people. We are for it. It's great that so many people were able to attend this meeting. And I think what Ken is saying is really important. So it's actually because it's not just how the perception of scrutiny is perceived up there. It's also, um, it has a knock on effect sometimes to what we're able to prove to government. So for instance, our accounts can be qualified just because the quorum has been met for scrutiny uh, and overview. So these things do have uh, significant uh, consequences. Um, but look, it's great to come back there uh, and uh, to have the chance to explain some of the huge progress that we've made since our last address here. Uh, I think we should start with Cavaliers because obviously it's in the news constantly and to be able to say I'm sure for everybody whether you happen to be from the rural or any other part of the local city region. Um, I went out to find out what uh, the different perspectives were um, I think it was the week before last when um, I spoke to both the conveners and the Chief Executive John Sibber came out and spoke to us also. And uh, I was accompanied with uh, Councillor Phil Davis, who's the leader in rural on that occasion. And I think we both got to the conclusion that anything that we can do, anything at all that we can do to support the yard, we will do. And that includes um, the new Mersey Ferries, and we've seen uh, uh, a lot of talk about the new Mersey Ferries. The only thing I would say is that. If it appears during the procurement process that will predetermine the outcome, then this can have dire consequences, not just for us to be leading challenged. It would halt any construction phase of the ferries and wouldn't help the workforce. So I just uh, ask everybody to be cognizant of the fact that we can't really go out and say what actually I think most of us would like to happen. And we can't um, say anything about where the
the way it was over there. And we've asked the government to work with us to bring forward the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, um, £675 million pounds worth of, of um, shipbuilding. If they bring that forward, actually, that is the, the thing that will really secure it. Stuff that we're doing is welcome as it is. It's really a bit of stick and plaster. And, um, we would like uh, those workers to have gainful employment for many years to come, and the government can really uh, help to protect uh, vital industry uh, apprenticeships and um, thousands of people in the supply chain. On November the 9th, uh, I announced uh, something called the Strategic Investment Fund, uh, SIF. We had something called SIF previously, this is different, so we have a single investment fund, this is a strategic investment fund. Uh, it's half a billion pounds, you know, that's to be sniffed at, and that money will create high quality jobs and boost the living standards of everybody across the whole city region. And what we're, we're doing with that, we want to genuinely transform the way in which we spend public money. So for instance, any organisation that bids in, now they will uh, be looked more favourably in the weighting of those submissions if, for instance, they prioritise certain things. The use of local labour, for instance, and local supply chains. If they pay the real living wage, if they recognise trade unions, if they offer apprenticeships, if they support underrepresented groups, and a whole host of other things, so that we can genuinely get some social value and social impact from that huge investment. And it's a, it's a big step for us. Uh, people talk about the Preston model, and the Preston model is demonstrably uh, ensure that funding that previously would have gone out in that area is recycled, so it's painting in economics, keeping as much as we possibly can within the uh, six districts in this case. But no one's really done that at the scale that we're going to do it at. And uh, other people are looking at what this experiment um, will. Um, <coughs> will achieve, and I think uh, if it's successful, which I'm not absolutely certain it will be, we'll see a lot more people start to do something that, again, the local city needs is ahead of the country on. Uh, we also launched the Apprenticeship Travel Card, and uh, again, uh, it's one of the things I know that this committee uh, it has been really um, instrumental in, and that is what are the barriers to people taking up apprenticeships, what are the things that we can do to relieve concerns that young people especially have uh, around uh, the apprenticeship programme. And when we dug into some of the, the detail in uh, the myriad of reports that are available to us, one of the biggest hurdles was the cost of travel. In other words, if you're in construction or if you're in social care, when you have to move around, the cost of that can eat up up to half of the allowance of the wage that you get as an apprentice. So, uh, working with uh, our uh, bus operators, Stagecoach and Arriva, we've announced that we will halve the price of the apprenticeship travel. So, anybody in our city region uh, who's an apprentice now gets uh, the same, which could be up to £400 a year, a big chunk of an apprenticeship allowance. Um, and that is another one of those things where it's a promise made and a promise delivered because it was in. My manifesto before I was elected as the Metro Mayor. One of the other big issues, other than uh, Brexit, uh, that we uh, constantly see reporting on, is around um, food banks and the propensity of people now, because of the role of university credits and a whole host of other things, to rely on food banks. Again, I went over to um, <coughs> the Will side a few weeks ago. And just this week I've been to, to two food banks, one in Liverpool and one in Milford, and I'm going to one in Halton, so I'm getting around to see the great work that they do. But actually, um, we've gone from 2010, there was 41,000 people who accessed food banks, to the situation today where about 1.4 million people are accessing food banks. There's something drastically wrong in the fifth richest country in the world, we've got so many people having to rely on that. Not, don't forget, these are not just people out of work. You get an awful lot of people who are in work, and in work poverty, according to the latest report, is grown to about 4 million people. 
people. So it's a real uh, indictment of austerity and government uh, policies in, in my opinion. Uh, but again, what can we do? Obviously, we can either, you know, quite badly highlight our concerns or we can try and do something practical. So I had some a uh, group called um, Fansport Food Banks come into see me and they were explaining that when people go to the food bank, sometimes they'll walk many miles and get to the food bank and through generosity of all the donations, these people go away with three or four bags of food, many tinned uh, items to be fresh. There's some way to, as you know, you carry four bag bags to shop and if you're doing that over many miles, then it can be quite a journey for you. So, what was it that we could do? Well, over the Christmas period, we've now agreed with the bus operators again working in partnership with them that we will give <coughs> the food banks free bus tickets that they can distribute to those people who come in so that those people can get home uh, on public transport. Um, it's 3,000 tickets. Hopefully, it'll get us over the winter period. If not, we'll, we'll look at that again. But again, this. <laughs> a little bit more of a fundamental issue I think that we need to tackle um, rather than just continue to do this we need to uh, generally uh, analyse why this is happening and see what we can do as a country rather than uh, ourselves just always trying to find uh, short term solutions to it. Um, we've also launched One Front Door again this is something that Jordan uh, the mayoral selection and um, election uh, was a, a big issue. Many businesses had said that they were confused by the myriad of different business and board organisations in the local city region. It's been calculated between 300 nodes and 600 nodes, uh, different organisations that you can all go to uh, if you've got uh, any other investment opportunity or you're an indigenous, indigenous business and you want some support. We've simplified that with the agreements of all six local authorities, so we're now uh, able to have one front door, a single point of contact for FDI, for people's investment, for place markets, and for everything that we need to do in the city region. It's gone down really, really well with the business community, um, but we will hope that we will see the economic benefit of this by more investment coming into the city region. And, um, it's recognised, for example, that if we bring jobs in to Nosley, that those jobs that we bring in can also benefit the likes of St. Helens and Holton. Uh, if we invest in skills in Stepham, for instance, we can benefit the people in Wirral Mill. In other words, um, we need to look at this as a city region, and the benefits can be agglomerated across those six districts, but it will contribute to the wide growth targets that we've got are creating those 5,000 new jobs and 800 sorry, new businesses and grow the economy by a billion pounds a year, which I think are really ambitious targets, but I think it's achievable. And then um, people will know since we last spoke, we were talking about the Giants coming, and the Giants have been and unfortunately gone, but alongside uh, Mayor Anderson and Councillor uh, Davis, I had the unique experience of Jean-Luc Cucard um, and his team from Royal Deluxe um, as the, uh, the giant visitor book of the world, of course, will be estimates of about 1.3 billion people who saw a spectacular performance, you know, bringing together families and friends and visitors from all over. And, uh, I think the, uh, the feedback has been amazing. The, the tangible outcome we will be able to uh, pull together something for you to say this is uh, what the economic benefit is. But actually, there are the intangible benefits. There were people who came to the Liverpool City region to Wirral, probably hadn't been to the Wirral before, maybe they've been to New Brighton, who will return. The image was really important to try to get brand Liverpool to an international audience. Those people, surely, who came saw what happened in our city region will remember that next time somebody has something negative to say about the local city region, hopefully those people will be ambassadors and say, actually that day that was fantastic, it was a great weekend, and more and more people to see people coming back for retail journeys after something like this. So there is a, uh, an absolute benefit. But I wanted to 
take the opportunity on behalf of the CA, on behalf of you and everybody else to thank the staff, both here and that place of travel, and from Liverpool and Wheel Councils, but also um, for hundreds of volunteers, the people who give up the time and make it such a special occasion, for people who demonstrate the warmth and friendliness that we're famous for here. So um, I think it'd be great if um, you know, we all ensure that wherever possible we get these messages out to those fantastic people who make it such a special weekend. And just finally, Chair, um, I think we all traditionally believe that we're said to be the best route out of poverty. Um, but for one of the workers in the UK currently, they are living in poverty and it's um, simply not the case any longer that getting a job means that the economic family went to poverty. It's an absolute scandal of, um, of what's happened. But here in the city region, we're trying to do something about it by lending uh, fair pay into all the projects that we support via our procurement process. And to mark Living Voyage Week, I wrote to uh, the 50 biggest private sector employees in the city region, calling on them to join what we've done here. We were and still are um, the first combined authority country to become a real living wage employer. There's a lot of fears that perhaps we um, haven't had a fair crack of work in the global press to get out with the first to be uh, dementia friendly combined authority, the first to be autism friendly, the first to have a C zero suicide alliance, a whole host of different things we've done here that differentiates us, I, I would say, from areas like the West Midlands, for instance, where they have a, a, a bit from a different political party. I think real benefits for what we can do with six districts all pulling in the same direction. So I'll leave it there, Chair, and I'll answer any questions. Thank you, Steve. I think that was a pretty comprehensive report, so thank you for that. Um, I'd just like to ask one question myself and then pass it to the floor. Yeah, so just on the, the, the one front door um, policy, it sounds like a great idea to explain the that the city of Liverpool has. Uh, I just wanted to know how you ensure that these small employers will still see the economic benefits. So. Well, you're right, I mean, it's not about Liverpool, it's about what the brand of Liverpool think. It's one of those things, isn't it, that um, when uh, me and uh, one of the members of the Supreme Court were in Parliament, uh, we were there when Eric Pickles tried to mess around with the, uh, the name of the combined authority. Um, at one stage, genuinely, it was going to be called Holt and no deal of Wilson Talent, Seth and the Royal Combined Authority. Genuinely, that was on the all the papers. We, uh, we, at best, I was hoping for something, uh, sorry, at worst, I was hoping for something like uh, Greater Merseyside because Holt joined us. Um, I think Liverpool being the brand, the international brand, is the door open for us. And all I'd say, Jay, is that when I, I do represent the Combined Authority, I, I've been speaking uh, in Paris in a, a, a world forum of uh, mayors. I went to New York, even though I was on flight to, to meet him there, he would be, it's because of the brand of Liverpool. Then you explain that it's not just about Liverpool. You're absolutely right. This cannot work if uh, the only economic growth that we see is within the city. It has to be for all of the six districts that the city local authority areas to benefit. And that actually we've seen uh, the investment that we've put to the old city. Uh, pot of money that we have, we've seen the growth in those areas. So, for instance, in Nosley, um, I think the top is £42 billion. Um, and obviously, saying hi, it's higher than that. Um, was it 58? There's, there, anyway, I'll give the exact figures, but we've seen uh, significant investments in a whole host of different things in Nosley, and we can do that breakdown um, borough by borough so that you can see what uh, everybody's had. But this new pot of money is there for everybody in the city regions before. It's mainly going to go to three local authorities. Local authorities, if they get up and ready projects, there's a big chunk of money for people. We will see uh, that economic prosperity share that can be cut through that way through the uh, local city region. Thanks, Steve. Uh, do members have any questions? Uh, Councilman Lashi? Thanks, Joe. Uh, thanks for that, sir. Uh, very involved in addressing. Uh, <clears throat> Chairman, you did mention about uh, Will, the 
don't forget, theirs is a, a regulated, ours is a deregulated service for green or for common, and that's a question. And also, we still have the Transport Committee. The Transport Committee is made up of uh, cross party uh, councillors. Okay, there's a few questions about um, the one front door. Um, I, I read this paper. The Corinthians are worried about things like duplication. It's quite a sizable budget, 1.5 million. However, uh, when you read it, so it's, you know, the paper answers most of the questions you can, you can rationally pull. Um, it does strike me that we need some sort of metric to um, uh, measure the value of this expenditure, which is not insignificant. Incidentally, I'd quite like to know what about 1.5 million is the salary element, and um, what's the other element. Um, in, in, in terms of actually identifying uh, the, the money that's being spent, we need some kind of metric to, uh, to measure it. And I was, it obviously can't be done on the basis of whether there's more investment coming into Liverpool, because investment could collapse as a result of Brexit and have nothing to do with these arrangements, which are sensible in themselves. Um, so, in terms of progressing this initiative, which I do welcome and I do support, um, how do you think it should be judged, you know, two years from hence? I think, John, you just hit the nail on the head up here. Um, I think we're all guessing what a post-Brexit world will look like. Is it going to be dire, more dire, even more dire than that, or the direst? Um, we know that it's going to be disastrous uh, for the UK BLC. What I have to do uh, is to try and look at despite all those vicissitudes and, and our fortunes, what are the opportunities for the Liverpool City region? And that, that's what we're doing. And to ensure that it's as simple as possible for people who are looking at the UK to contact us and then to potentially invest in an area, I think that's the real benefit of this. And, um, I, I was with the Chinese delegation and I asked them why Manchester had received such a big chunk of money. And they basically said, well, we knew where to go, we knew where to speak to. We didn't know the same thing in the Liverpool City region because it was basically at that time six districts, not just um, all speaking together, but sometimes competing against each other. And of course, everybody wants to win it. The real benefit of this, I think, will be if the question is, I've got a billion pounds to invest in the Liverpool City region, it won't be Phil for Will just with his little hat on, saying, well, we want to hear. The first question that we'll answer is, um, which is the best strategic fit for that investment opportunity? And that's the only way in which you get six different districts, all with very different offers, but the complementarity of those six uh, districts working together, that's how we'll compete, not just against Manchester, or Leeds, or Sheffield, or whatever, but against now, 27 other countries that we're outside of. So um, it's a hard one, John. If you, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll work with anybody to see whether we can come up with a matrix that may well be measurable. But um, at the moment, and we've got people like um, Dr. Beatrice Garcia and uh, others that will know who, that's what they do, and they don't know how to do this. So, um, yeah, we don't want technology, John. That's Mickey Mouse doing that. We just pretend we want something that's actually tangible and we can measure. It just strikes me that feedback from the local authorities is probably crucial because they have to do a lot of heavy lifting at the end of the day by their planning authorities in whatever you know, schemes come forward. And of course, they all have a vested interest, even Phil, in um, ensuring that they get as much as possible out of the system as well. Because ultimately, if they're going to keep rating income dependent upon rating income, they're definitely going to want whatever developments coming into the Merseyside to go their way. So there's a kind of incentive pulling against the centre there in a funny sort of way. Uh, kind of dog eat dog uh, scenario potentially emerging. But I, I pass on just very quickly on the um, uh, fund for the rev reviving of town centres. There's a five million pot here, um, and you're where the Chancellor's announced the scheme. And you speak to the local authorities, they say, well, we know this money's there, but we don't know how it's coming or in what form. Um, am I right to assume? you will have a sort of bidding system for this money, or will you sort of tell it out regardless of what schemes are available in the local authorities? Um, and is it, would it be possible for other groups apart from local authorities but situated in town centres, I'm thinking of business improvement districts, to make a call upon the cash as well? I 
think to the latter point, yes, um, it can. I went down to, to Westminster to speak to uh, Treasury officials and, and to, um, I forgot the guy's name, uh, who's the Treasury, Treasury Minister, Robert Jenrick, um, about this very issue because I didn't want it to be seen that we're putting some money in and therefore the government doesn't have to do anything for our area. Our money is additional to what we should be getting as a first year of that uh, town centre investment fund. So we're uh, happy to work with our local authorities, either they individually or as a combined authority who will put bids in and will support each other. The idea genuinely is to try and see whether we can look at innovative ways in which we can regenerate the town centres because the money will follow if we can do that. And uh, it just needs a, a bit of imagination again when we can here. Um, some of the stuff that Phil's proposing over the water, I think, is a, a fantastic model that potentially could be used in other areas. But I know that, for instance, in your area, Southport, um, they're looking at, at something uh, through Second Council. So I, I'm looking forward to what comes forward. The one thing that I didn't want to do, the one thing that I, I think we all have to be really aware of, is that we don't want a combined authority you like to become de facto the same sort of, uh, of organisation that we criticise from the centre of London and that is that why would we know best? I don't think London knows what's best, White Hall Western doesn't know what's best for us, just the same thing, Bad Authority doesn't know what's best for Southport or for Birkenhead. It's about subsidiarity getting down to its lowest level. That's why we're giving this money out to set to those areas. You come up with your plans. We're not telling you what to do with that money. So um, I think we'll see some ambitious plans come forward and then we'll get a big slice of that pot as we possibly can keep it. Sure. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Councillor Fenner? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Steve. I'll let you off a short comment. I just wanted to say about the Giants. I have family of wealth relations from Canada that were here for that and they've gone back with amazing stories. And then I've had to write a script on how the Giants, the reason why, and the story behind the Giants. And that they're looking to say, when can we come back and see them again? And I've told them that they might not happen. So I just wanted to congratulate them <coughs> for um, the other the other counties that have done this. It's really good. And I'm proud to give them all for what they've done. And I hope we do see them back again. Thanks, Steve. Just to uh, explain as well, don't forget. The reason that we're reporting on this is a combined authority, and that is because we invested in those, so it's the combined authority that gave the funding that allowed that to happen. And through where Phil was doing on uh, culture, we've also done something about what we can do with our budget. So 1% of our budget now goes to culture. So we've, we're the first again, so it's called a percent for art, but we've already said that <coughs> culture and tourism, certainly the visitor economy, is massive to us, not just by the way to Liverpool City Centre, but for instance, um, when the golf comes, it comes to uh, Sefton or to Whittle, the Intrigue Grand National, part it's called the Liverpool Intrigue Grand National, it's actually in Sefton, the, the, uh, the highest attended uh, tourist attraction, paid tourist attraction, it's not a Liverpool, it's a Liverpool <coughs> Safari Park, with the six bits that we've got are absolutely fantastic, they've all got something to offer. And next year, this sorry, this year, um, St. <coughs> Helens was the borough of culture. Next year, we're also going to be the borough of culture. And wait till you see the programme of events that we're all going on. And then the year after, it will be another one of us. We can use culture as a catalyst for wise regeneration. It's been proven here. I've got all the, the stats. Again, you can be very welcome for, for that to be shared with you. We want this to, um, to really act as, uh, as an opportunity for all of those people with a cultural offer to come forward and for 12 months to have the spotlight and show on them. Steve. Um, Councillor Watson. Awesome. Chairman, thank you. Thank you for those answers, Mr. Mayor. Three quick points, if I may. On your five point um, criteria for organisations seeking investment, you mentioned that the process would be weighted in favour of those who met that particular criteria. 
one would have the most people would at least need some of them. Uh, but equally, there could be an additional cost. H have you given any, or have you put down any figure uh, for the, the weighting elements? In other words, if it's 10% more than the next level, or that doesn't meet these criteria, etc. Have you, have you built that in? In other words, are you making a conscious decision that you will pay more if these criteria are met? That's the first point. Um, second one on apprenticeships, I think last time you and I uh, spoke, you were a member of the I2, was at the North West Trade Council's Apprentice Award evening, and as so we all know, I for that. And you're right, that this issue of getting young people in is important. You mentioned a figure of four hundred how is that actually going to be funded? I mean, you say you come to an agreement with the providers, but where are they getting that money from? Uh, and again, is there going to be any form of geographical um, assessment, X number of miles, for example? And a similar thing applies to uh, food banks. I'd have to say in my area, I don't think it's a problem. Um, and you certainly wouldn't want to get too complicated, so you can't say to somebody, you've got four boxes of cornflakes, you don't get you've got eight cans of eight pieces in you because they're a lot heavier. <laughs> yeah, it's a fact, isn't it? So again, is, is there um, a cry of criteria used for that? Because you, you, you could get yourself involved with a whole range of uh, issues that relate to individuals, uh, which would make, make it incredibly complicated. So if you've got 3,000 uh, tickets to give out, is that across the whole of uh, and again, what is the criteria going to be in terms of where those people come from? Okay. Um, the, the, the first one, you're quite right. Um, people should be doing what we're asking them to do anyway. It's good business practice. All of the things that we're asking them to constantly be improving, that they, that they have a not on beneficial uh, improvements to business uh, and productivity. So it should be doing it anyway. Um, but we're saying that if you do do that, and some don't, then if you're two bids, then one will be weighted more favourably than another. But the bid is the bid, so we don't um, have a premium on it, so you don't get a dividend if you do it or, or, or that those things that you should um, quite rightly be doing. On the uh, travel for apprentices, there are no restrictions. You get a pass, so wherever you are, you can travel all day with that pass. Um, and the way in which we're funding it is to actually work with what's called the Bus Alliance, so the, the main place in the stagecoach in Aviva. And we've said that we uh, will include them in any of the publicity and that they will appreciate the fact that when Attention they have please. these young people we traveling are on the bus, to commence a test of that the fire alarm um, system. Stay with them. Do not take any action when you hear the alarm so message. We need to have mobile shift. We need to attract more people onto the buses and this is unique. Although 82% of all public journeys are made on the bus and the buses. But we need to include um, uh, the Attention, please.